Hello and welcome to the Grumpy Stew Podcast. My name is Dylan. I am the Grumpy Stew, and this is the podcast for flight attendants. This is episode 44. Thanks for listening. Do me a favor. If you like what you hear, subscribe to the Grumpy Stew Podcast on YouTube and visit thegrumpystew.com for everything Grumpy Stew, including exclusive content and links to all the Grumpy socials. And in speaking of exclusive content, from time to time, you might catch me, the Grumpy One, on a live stream. You can catch those live streams on YouTube and Facebook, so make sure you are subscribed and following on Facebook so you can get notifications. I have a solidly okay show for you today, plus my usual rants, raves, and aviation news commentary. Hey, did you notice the new theme music? We're going retro. Tell me what you think. But first, a message from our sponsor. Crack AM, for when you need to stay awake. I was constantly nodding off on the jump seat. But with Crack AM, I'm ready for this fully loaded 747. Who's ready to fly, bitches? Man, I don't even know where to start. So much has happened in the aviation world recently between the lady that tried to breastfeed a cat and the dude that assaulted both a flight attendant and an air marshal, clearly firing in all cylinders. And then there's the dude from Florida that um, wore a woman's thong on his face in place of a mask as a protest against the mask policy. It was just absurd. But I, I don't know where to begin. And now, as if all that's not enough, there's a new COVID variant, Omicron. I'm sure you've heard of it. And quite frankly, the longer you anti-vax people hold out, you just give this thing more time and avenues to mutate. That's, that's how this shit works. And before you know it, the virus will evade current vaccines and therapeutics, and we'll be right back where we started. I mean, is that, is that what you want? To go right back to what life was like in early 2020? Is that what you want? I don't understand you people. You won't get vaccinated because you believe patently false propaganda. That's absurdly, comically, provably false. But you try to hide the fact by saying stupid shit like, I don't know what's in it. And I suppose you say that to avoid looking stupid. Well, bad news. You look stupid. You had to be vaccinated just to go to school. You got a tetanus shot when you were like, what, 12, 13, 14? You probably had to get a yellow fever shot when you got hired at your airline. And here's a capper. Some of you, like me, are military veterans. And you were inoculated against about, what, a dozen diseases? Including smallpox and anthrax if you deployed in the early 2000s. And um, you people didn't bitch about not knowing what's in it then, did you? Did you? No, you didn't. You followed orders, you got your fucking inoculations, and you moved on. You didn't have a choice anyway. I don't know what's in it. Right. Right. Ironic. Coming from people who eat processed foods almost exclusively. I suppose you know exactly what's in every medication you take, right? And every vitamin you take. Every workout supplement. Every energy drink. Even the booze you drink has additives. I suppose you know what's in it, right? You know the ingredients of every single thing that you put in your body. You know everything that's in there, right? Right? Get over yourselves, bunch of fucking morons. And here's why you're dumb, or at least maybe not dumb. Maybe that's too... No, no, you're dumb. But you're also woefully misinformed. And I bet if you were actually honest about this, you'd be nodding your head. Because up until about April or May 2020, when the vaccines were finally becoming more widely available, you guys were all for it. Prior to that, you guys were all for it. The vaccine, the vaccine, everything will get better. The vaccine, the vaccine. And then right around April or May 2020, a certain political party made the cynical calculation that as long as people were getting their shots and the case numbers were going down and the deaths were going down, it made Joe Biden look good. And that fat, bloated, orange piece of shit looked worse. And you guys and your little fucking cult just can't handle that. You can't handle it. You can't handle reality. So instead, they decided to lie to people and propagandize people and convince them of crackpot conspiracies that are just fucking bullshit and absurd, all just to keep us sick and perpetuate the problem. They've calculated 
that as long as they can keep you woefully ignorant, they can own the libs and hang on to their jobs because that's all that matters to them in their fucking cult. They don't care about you or your kids or your parents or society as a whole. They have no problems burning this motherfucker down just to spite people that aren't in their cult. That's brass tacks right there. Get vaccinated. Get fucking boosted before it's too fucking late. Okay? God damn it, this pisses me off. All right. Off my soapbox. I'm done. Jesus Christ. You know, the, the, the energy some of you people waste just to avoid wearing a mask is just unfucking real I watched a guy eat himself sick just to avoid wearing a mask. They want to play fucking games? We'll play some fucking games. Here's this dude with the industrial-sized bag of goldfish and the big, giant, movie theater-sized bag of Twizzlers. And, you know, what he's going to do, he's going to try to nibble on this stuff to avoid having to wear his mask. And I'm like, hey, you know, I want you to enjoy the flight, enjoy your snacks, do your thing. But if you're going to eat those giant bags of crackers and Twizzlers, you're not going to just sit there and nibble on them one little bite at a time. You're going to actually eat like a normal person. I know exactly what you're trying to do. And to his credit, he did just that. He sat there and he shoved that shit in his face for five hours and then yacked it all up right before we landed. Play dumbass games, we'll win dumbass prizes. All just to avoid wearing a little fucking mask on his face. The, uh, you know, yeah, that was a longer flight. It was like five, six hours. But, you know, us flight attendants, we wear these things our entire day. We wear it from the moment we leave our hotel room until the moment we get to our next hotel room. Easily a 14, 15 hour evolution. Yet these people act like it's just a major, like, fucking imposition. Like it's a life changing, like, negative thing. Like it's like, it's like suddenly becoming homeless or something. You know, that kind of stress. Just because they got to wear a mask. And it's not like a secret. They check all the boxes. They agree to all the terms and conditions more than once. Yet, you know, I can't, I can't wear this. I can't wear this mask. I, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll eat this bag of crackers for five hours. Brilliant. Go for it. <laughs> Moron. So, um, as you all know, airlines are bemoaning um, some staffing shortages on the ground. It's, you know, it's the shitty jobs that are typically outsourced and, you know, low-wage jobs nobody wants. Well, you know, like aircraft cleaners and wheelchair pushers, those those jobs. And they're having a hard time adequately staffing all of those positions, which led me to yet another brilliant Grumpy Stew idea. All right, hear me out. You know which group of people could really use a steady job? And they'll do anything, literally anything for a, a check. No job is too shitty for these people. Nonviolent registered sex offenders. Hey, uh, hey, I said nonviolent. We're talking about, you know, guys that got busted for a dick prank gone wrong or, you know, like maybe flashing grandma in the park or something like that. Nonviolent. These are people that are just, they're just full of love. They're just so full of love they can't help get some of it on you. And who else would be more than happy to help Grandma swing by the ladies' room on the way to the next gate? Hell, it'd probably make her day. God knows she hasn't had any action in a couple of decades. It's a perfect match. Or if the the idea of nonviolent registered perverts doesn't quite resonate, if you don't like that idea, I've I, I got another one. How about this? Children. Not, not the little ones, like 11, 14-year-olds, you know, not quite legal to work, so you can get around the minimum wage and other regulations. Money-saving idea. And, and it's about time these little freeloaders start paying their way, you know what I mean? And they'd be perfect for cleaning planes. They're small. They can get into, you know, those cramped spaces, really get in there and do the detail work. The planes would never be cleaner. Just keep them away from the pervert wheelchair pushers. Do you ever feel less than fresh? Has your hookup last night left you with a painful rectal itch that you just can't reach? Well, now there's Summer's Eve for him, the only daily douche product specifically designed for men. Available in three flavors, cream pie, chocolate mousse, and lemon tart. 
bring new meaning to the phrase, he's a little salty. Summer's Eve for him. Available now. So as most of you have probably heard, a lady was kicked off of a flight for attempting to breastfeed a cat. Details are a little sparse, but from what I've been able to gather and piece together, it wasn't, you know, literal breastfeeding. Like, I don't think she got, you know, the cat to latch or or anything. It's just the whole thing is ridiculous. I don't think she got the cat to latch. (laughs) It just cracks me up thinking about it. But, um... Oh, here's a funny detail, though. (laughs) The cat was one of those creepy, hairless breeds that looks like a little pissed-off alien. (laughs) Oh, God. And she had it all swaddled up in a blanket like a baby. Oh, I can't stop laughing. But uh, from what I understand, another passenger approached the crew complaining about this woman breastfeeding. And, And the crew's like, hey, you know, breastfeeding is okay. We don't shame people for breastfeeding. Etc. But you know, of course, the pastor left out the detail that it was a, <laughs> it was a hairless cat that was <laughs> being abused by this poor woman, and <laughs> so so the crew goes over there to check it out, and sure as shit, there's grandma trying to breastfeed a cat, saggy old tits just flapping in the breeze. The crew's like, uh, first of all, that cat needs to be in the carrier and under a seat. Oh God. Ugh. One, one of the rumors I've heard was the lady rubbed butter on her nipples so the cat would lick it off. I also heard that the cat was howling for dear life. I mean, I guess he just wasn't into nipple play. I, I don't know. Oh, God, the whole thing is just so absurd. I'm crying. Oh, God. All right, obviously, the cat lady was asked to leave, and it, and it made the fucking news. And apparently this wasn't the first time something like this happened. It appears there was a similar incident a few years ago. Like, is breastfeeding cats a thing? What the fuck? This immediately has my comedic mind thinking of new consumer products for breastfeeding cats. Kitty on a titty. Cat nips. Knockers and pussies. Tits for cats. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Imagine how chapped that lady's tits have to be. <laughs> I mean, cat teeth are sharp. Knockers and pussies. Th- I mean, that would be a good name for a lesbian bar. Y- you know, there was a restaurant in Vegas called The Pink Taco. I think I mentioned this before. I-, I don't know if it's still there. But I've often said someone should put a gay bar right next to it and call it The Spotted Dick. Or cocktails. Two words, cock and tails. M- the mouthful. I could probably spend all day coming up with puns for bars and restaurants. Sausage Fest. Evidently, I found a hidden talent, puns for gay bars. One of these days, I want to open a place and call it HSIOW. Holy shit, it's only Wednesday. Totally stole that idea from George Carlin. But I think he's right. People would drink more if they thought it was Wednesday all the time. Oh, God. Okay, so here's this total idiot from Fort Lauderdale that recently got pulled off of a UA flight for using a woman's thong as a mask. And obviously he was removed and placed on the no-fly list after he refused to wear a compliant mask. It also turns out he did this same thing on a Delta flight and got his ass put on their no-fly list as well. Genius Florida man said he's been pulling these stunts to protest airlines absurd masking policies. Except it's not an airline policy. It's a federal mandate. Airlines have no say in it. We all have to follow it. Flight attendants have no say in it either. Uh, It's just, it's so stupid. Dude's certainly welcome to his opinion. We all are. And he might have a point. You know, you got to wear the mask. Unless you're actively eating or drinking, right? But you're still breathing while you eat and drink, right? So it's kind of feeble in one respect, but... There's a right and wrong way to go about doing these things. Plus, there's the people that that do stupid shit like eat crackers one little tiny nibble at a time to avoid wearing a mask, like the first dude I told you about. His protest is just kind of impotent, I guess. Giving some flight attendants a hard time about something I have no control over is truly just, I mean, that's the absurdity. Want to waste your time and money to get thrown off of a plane and thrown on a a no-fly list? Be my guest. But your efforts would be better spent by contacting your congressperson. 
or the Department of Transportation or the Department of Homeland Security. They're the ones that oversee the TSA or the FAA. They're the ones making the decisions here, not us. Not the airlines, not flight attendants, certainly. You know, some fancy gem flyer accused me of going on a power trip. <laughs> I mean, really? In order for one to trip over power, one must first have power over which to trip. That's just basic fucking logic. And we don't have any power. We inform, not enforce. After we get tired of informing, we just take things up to the next level. And that person makes a decision. If they can't make the decision, they take it to the person above them. And that's it. We don't decide what the policies are or how they're enforced. We just inform. Arguing with us is an absolute waste of time. For one, I won't hear it. But, you know, don't want to wear a mask? Perfectly fine. Don't wear a mask. That's fine. Don't wear it. But you also don't have to use commercial transportation. You're certainly welcome to use your car. And as a consumer, you have the option. You have options as a consumer. You can opt to drive maskless. It's not like any of this is news. It's not like these people aren't prompted to indicate their understanding of the rules more than once before they ever step foot on a fucking plane. That's the true absurdity. That dude with a thong on his face thinks he's smart, which is laughable at best. I mean, does he expect everybody to be like, oh, hey, that dude with panties on his face has a point. Quick, put him in charge of, like, everything. No. Come on. They're going to say, that dude has panties on his face. He's fucking stupid. Well, I, I certainly hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Grumpy Stew Podcast. I know I, and I enjoyed writing this episode and putting it together for you. If you did, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the Grumpy Stew YouTube channel. Remember, everything Grumpy Stew can be found on the GrumpyStew.com. Stay safe, stay well, stay grumpy, and I'll talk to you guys later. Later.